Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm bringing you a retrospective for the entire first wave of Masters of the Universe Masterverse. Now, in this particular wave, and turns out for the two following it, all of the Masterverse figures happen to be based off of the Revelation cartoon. However, that's not always going to be the case, because starting wave four, they're going to start branching out into new sublines, such as New Eternia. This first wave is a decent sized one. It consists of four core size figures, which are the four right here in the middle, as well as two deluxe size figures. Those come in the form of Battle Cat and Skelegod here. So there was definitely a lot to unpack with this first wave, and admittedly it took me a while to get through it. You know, I'm balancing trying to do, you know, the Motu reviews and then Transformers, and now, because I'm apparently a sadomasochist, I'm squeezing in Marvel Legends reviews on top of all that. It did take me quite some time to get through this first wave. And what makes it even worse is I actually have waves two and three like sitting here next to me in boxes just waiting for their time to shine. So I'm finally getting there, about a third of the way there now. So with any luck, I can keep up the pace and finally get caught up on the Masterverse stuff. Anyway, if you've seen my retrospectives before, you know what to expect. I'm going to give a quick recap of each figure in the wave, then a brief overview of the wave as a whole, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So let's go ahead and do this in the order that I reviewed these guys. The first one I did was this big deluxe figure, Skelegod, and he is an absolute beast of a toy. He came in at $30, so, you know, about 150% the cost of your core figures. And he's just a very, very big character. Pretty much towers over the others. And if you don't know, he represents Skeletor's upgraded form once he harnesses the power of the Sword of Power, which is why he includes one here. He also has this really cool little energy punch or fireball or whatever it is attaching to his fist. He did also have the alternative open hands for different posing. And this guy is a very, very poseable figure. He's got points of articulation all over him. Um, about the same as what you expect on these guys, but he also has like gauntlets that move around and just a little bit extra going on. And then he also has that just awesome, awesome multi-layered cape with little diamonds hanging off to like weight it down. Um, really cool looking. The whole flames around his neck, the big like flaming H right there on his chest. He was just a cool toy. And I keep, you know, making the reference to like call him a Final Fantasy boss. I mean, that's just the vibe I get from him. He really reminds me of, like, Chaos from the first Final Fantasy game. And I think he's really cool. Like, that's that's not a knock on the toy at all. I think his design is, like, appropriately over the top, right? When you have such an, an egomaniac like Skeletor, because, you know, your powered-up version is kind of a reflection of you, right? As, like, a person, as a soul. It just makes sense that he would just be over the top and gaudy and just super powerful looking. So I'm a big fan of that design. The only downside to this toy that I could really point out is that his ankles, the rocking in his ankles, is a little bit weak for his weight. So you see it wanting to move around a bit. So you gotta be pretty careful with posing him and setting him up. Because if I just bump him a little bit, I promise you he's gonna flop right over. So that's maybe the one downside, but otherwise a very cool toy. The next one I reviewed was one of our standard figures and it was Evil Inn. And this figure represents her appearance after the first episode of the show. You know, after Skeletor and He-Man have died and a few years have gone by. And this is Lynn kind of striking out on her own and even begrudgingly working with our heroes and the sorceress to help restore magic to Eternia because the threat is just greater than any grievance that they have with each other. So, Evelyn herself hasn't changed too much. She's rocking a different outfit now, which is a little more appropriate for, like, traveling and, you know, roughing it a little bit. You know, got some hiking pants and stuff like that. She's got this little satchel for traveling, which you find out in the show, she's actually keeping the head of the Staff of Havoc in there, or the Havoc Staff. And you can see she's actually grown her hair out a bit. Because if you did watch the original Filmation cartoon that this is supposedly a sequel to, during that standard time frame in which the He-Man stories take place, she was rocking short hair, or at least at one point she was. She didn't take her headdress off very often, so maybe it had been growing out for a few years, who knows. But now she has long white hair, and as I have her now, she's rocking a broken version of her staff. 
Now the toy does actually include an unbroken staff as well as an optional head with her classic headdress. And while having that unbroken staff is cool, it's also kind of continuity breaking because by the time she dons this garb, it had already been broken by Tila's sword in the introductory episode. And again, the fact that they did include the headdress and did include the intact staff does make me worry that they are never going to release a figure of Evelyn's classic design from that first episode. I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong. We do know that Wave 4 is bringing us the classic outfit Tila, and her, you know, outfit and everything is not very different from Evelyn's, so it could happen. I do hope it happens, because I do like Evelyn's, you know, updated classic outfit that they showed in that first episode, where it's just got a few more bells and whistles than, like, the 80s version. I will also say, I would love to get a figure of Evelyn in her sorceress form, where she's got, like, the whole bat motif and all that going on. That was a cool outfit. If we can get one of those, I'll be very happy. The other potential form we could get for her is, you know, the uh, powered-up Evelyn when she gets a sort of power. She gets really huge. And who knows, they might release her. I don't know, Would they? I wonder if they would release her as a standard figure, because physically she's probably not much taller than He-Man, or if they'd make her deluxe and make her, you know, really big like Skelegod. I'm not really sure. I can't remember where she lines up height-wise against those two. Okay, and moving on... And we take a look at Moss Man, who is a pretty heavy redesign from his classic look, because the classic Moss Man was just a green beast man. So this toy gives him much more of a swamp thing-like appearance, with vines you know, wrapping all around him, and just gives him a much more plant-like look than just, you know, a green bestial humanoid. Even his fingers are made of, you know, wood or branches, and his feet are basically roots. Now, I think he's very cool looking, and I very much praised his redesign. Like, you can still see the elements of his base design here, right? Like, you can still kind of see the, uh, the Beast Man inspiration, like the diamond on the forehead. But it's kind of washed away to where it's only barely noticeable, and instead he stands out very much as his own character. Now, there are two issues with this figure. One, his root-like feet do not pose well at all you can really only pose him in very neutral positions. Otherwise, he's just kind of balancing on the tips of these roots. So, not the most poseable. And I mentioned this in my Skeletor review, but if you didn't see it, this really cool, like, vine attack hand that he comes with that normally you plug in right here, the little peg snapped off of it. Like, with barely any force. Like, I was trying to rotate the hinge, and just by a little bit of just pulling on it, pop right off so it's permanently broken even with some kind of super glue there's no way it'd ever be able to reattach this thing because of the force required to do so so that is a huge letdown now that could have just been a flaw in my toy so i don't want everyone to like you know panic and think oh god like my moss man's gonna break it may not but i just want to warn everybody it could happen and the fact that it happens so easily to me is a major knock on a toy that i otherwise thought was great because uh, I'm really disappointed I can't display him with this anymore. It's also a shame he didn't come with his mace. I'd almost prefer him have a mace than, you know, the long vine hand. But that's just me. Maybe you prefer to have the, the vine hand. I don't know. Um, so yeah, Moss Man, quite good overall, just has a few flaws. Then our He-Man here. He is a pretty faithful iteration of He-Man. I mean, he has all the bells and whistles you'd expect. He's got the belt, the loincloth, the boots. He's got the chest harness, though they've actually changed the symbol on his harness from the classic, like, Templar cross-looking symbol to something more akin to the H seen on later He-Man toys, like your Battle Armor He-Man, your Flying Fist He-Man, all that. He also does pretty well in the accessory department, coming with his, you know, sort of power here, which looks just like the one that Kenzo Skelly got and his classic shield. And if you take the shield off, you can see he even has his classic buckler that the Origins toys don't actually possess. They just go for like two armbands, but the original He-Man toy had this. So it was a really neat little call out to his, you know, OG design that they had changed from the uh, filmation design. So I do like that. And, you know, as far as a standalone figure, he's pretty good. My main contention with him though and it's the reason he's probably my least favorite of the group is the head sculpt and a lot of people besides myself criticize the head sculpt for one his head is really small for his body 
and it looks kind of comical. It makes him look like a big old meathead. And also the face, I'm just not a fan of the expression. It looks too bright-eyed and innocent and happy. And, you know, He-Man, while he is a somewhat jovial character, he, you know, takes on that particular form in times of crisis. So usually it's something serious going on. And that smiling face just feels very, very out of place amongst all these other characters that have some sort of like battle expression. So, you know, it's, it's weird seeing it and it's something that bugs me. So to me, he kind of loses major points because a head sculpt is everything, right? If a toy doesn't have a good looking head or face, it kind of ruins the look of the toy. So personally, I think he's my least favorite out of the group. Not a bad toy in any way, but just the least aesthetically pleasing. And to lead into our final figure we're going to look at, Battle Cat, He-Man also has the added issue of not being able to sit well on Battle Cat because of his new extended loincloth that kind of hangs down more like a barbarian-type loincloth rather than the tight woolies that the old He-Man toys had. Um, so he does have an issue sitting down flush where you either have to have him kind of balancing on this thing or you have to bend it at a pretty hard angle which could end up ruining your toy so keep in mind he does have some compatibility issues with his own mount which is again another knock against him though to be fair most of the male characters have some you know some kind of loincloth like this so they all kind of share that weakness but he is the one that's meant to ride on battle cat so i wish they could have come up with a better solution there maybe just make this hard plastic with like a hinge that lifts up or something really would have solved that issue. All right, next, hopping back to our evil warriors, we have Skeletor, just the regular standard Skeletor. And this guy, I think, is incredibly cool. Everything from his, uh, you know, skirt area to the shoulder dress, the hood with the nice, you know, fabric pattern going on there, the cloth cape, the uh, feet with the, like, sharp claws on them. Everything about this guy just reeks of coolness. The skull face looks very wicked. His Havoc staff looks better than it's ever looked. And then he even comes with the Shaping Staff from the classic cartoon episode. And also from the first episode of Revelation. Though in Revelation, it was like a purplish-silver color for some reason. I don't know. Um, but Skeletor is just super, super cool. And I think it's safe to say he is my favorite of your core assortment of characters. He just... I don't know, he knocks the design out of the park, and there's nothing about him that I dislike. Not the head sculpt, not the accessories or proportions or anything. I think he is just easily the most impressive looking of the $20 price point figures. All right, and now lastly, Battle Cat. And this is going to be hard to do even at a wide angle because he's so big. Look at the size of this guy. Battle Cat is an absolutely massive mount, which makes sense because these toys are much larger than your vintage or origins toys so you need a good size mount to go with them and the battle cat toy looks fantastic he's incredibly poseable which is a huge upgrade over the origins or vintage one all sorts of points of articulation and you know his updated design i think just looks very cool i think the helmet the saddle and everything look much better than the old one my only dislike of battle cat and you would have seen this in the review is that underneath the helmet he's just cringer they gave him Cringer's dopey face instead of the actual Battle Cat face. And again, I understand what they were going for, right? It is a play pattern gimmick to have two toys in one. You know, it's something you put on the package. Two in one, you know? But it just really doesn't work for me because instead of being able to have a cool Battle Cat without his helmet, instead you just get a very oversized Cringer. Who, I mean, look how big he is. Cringer is supposed to be quite small for a tiger, right? That's part of his uh, persona, that he's kind of a runt of the litter type character. And, you know, with this figure being so absolutely massive, it, it kind of ruins that. Like, it makes him a less than perfect battle cat and a less than perfect Cringer. You know, it's kind of that old saying where if you try to please everybody, you end up pleasing nobody. So, I still think that they should have just given him your normal, like, ferocious tiger head. And to me, that is the one big flaw of that toy. Aside from that, I think it's great. I think it's a really good mount, and even a really good standalone figure with all that posability. It really is just a shame that there are many of these core size figures that just don't work well with them. And when they're asking $40 for you to pick one of these up, you would hope that things had been thought through a little bit better than they were. 
Okay, so that covers all six of our new figures. Now to get my thoughts on the wave as a whole, I think it's a very interesting wave. You get four of your mainstay characters right off the bat. You know, you get your He-Man Skeletor, who are like always a presence with the Motu stuff. You get Battle Cat, who's always right there at He-Man's side. And you get Evil Ed, even if it is in a new and less recognizable form. Then you get Moss Man, who's also a classic character, but you know, he's more of like a, you know, C-tier character. And I don't mean as far as coolness, but just, you know, how often he shows up and how well known he is. And then you get something completely new, right? The long question, what if, of what if Skeletor got the sword of power and used it? And we finally, you know, really get a proper answer to that. And the results are impressive. Now, I think the show really let Skelegod and Skeletor down as far as the characterization, where they'd be really awesome and really powerful and really terrifying one minute, and then be just the absolute butt of everyone's joke the next. Now, I get that in the 80s cartoon, Skeletor was a mustache-twirling Saturday morning cartoon villain, right? Which basically meant he was incompetent. <laughs> like, let's be honest, when you look at your Megatrons and Skeletors of the world, they were kind of a joke. Like, they were powerful, but also idiots. However, this is not the 80s cartoon. This is a sequel to that cartoon made for adults who liked the old cartoon. As such, the expectation of the writing, and especially of the main villain, is a lot higher. We don't want Saturday morning cartoon levels of, you know, writing quality. We want something that we would pay money to go see in a movie theater or something. So, I do feel they, you know, failed Skeletor in, you know, what we've seen so far from the Revelation cartoon. I don't know if there's actually going to be a second season or not. Even though I think the writing could have been a lot better, I would still like to see a second season because it's still a continuation of the original He-Man story. And, you know, it ended on some interesting notes that I would like to see get fleshed out. Also, they totally let Evil in destroy an entire dimension worth of people, and she just got off the hook for that. Did, did nobody else notice that? <laughs> like, she literally destroyed heaven and everyone in it and made sure no one else could ever go there. Which meant they would either, I don't know, go into oblivion or go to subternia, which is basically hell. And they just let her off the hook because she felt bad, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Like, has some real WandaVision vibes there, only way worse. You know, Wanda just held a town of people captive under her powers. Evelyn literally destroyed heaven. <laughs> it's really bizarre to me that they just let her go live her life peacefully out in the mountains. Okay, get a little out in the weeds and talking too much about the show, not enough about the toys. So I'm gonna reel it back in. Uh, like I said, I think it's a good introductory wave. You get a lot of what's familiar and then a little bit of something new just to show how the story is evolving, how the series is evolving. And I think overall, they give some really nice modern updates to those classic, you know, toy and filmation designs. And I like how they, for a lot of the characters, pull inspiration from different iterations of the series. You know, you get He-Man here looking more or less like his filmation counterpart, but getting some of the gear from his original toy. You get Skeletor mixing elements from his 2002 design, and really just coming up with something that I think looks fantastic and the best he's ever looked. And I really like that. I like that they were able to just tweak some designs here and there, make something that really looks impressive on a screen, and not just, you know, the same handful of actors rotoscoped and then drawn with you know, different skin tight armor on that just conform to the physiques of those actors. And yeah, I think it was a step in the right direction. Now again, the writing, it could definitely be better. But the character designs, I would say, in almost every case, are phenomenal. I say almost, because I still think that Teela's mercenary look is just stupid. If you showed me that character without me ever watching the show, I would have no idea who that is. So I think they tried a little bit too hard to make her the new edgy girl in town. But that's just me. All right, so we've covered each figure, given thoughts on the wave as a whole, and now for my final thoughts, you know, was this wave worth it? Was it a good start, all that? I think so. I think while it's not perfect, it has its flaws, it is a good lead in. And it kind of sets a blueprint for what to expect from not just the Revelation toys, but Masterverse as a whole. Because I've seen the new Viking He-Man and Barbarian Skeletor, and you know, you can see that they reuse a lot of parts and design cues and stuff from what we see here. So I think it's a good starting point. And I am looking forward to Masterverse branching out into other things too. 
We don't know all of what they're going to do yet, but it's got me pretty excited for it. So if you haven't picked these up yet and you've been on the fence, you're not sure, I think you'll enjoy most of them. I don't think you have to look, like exactly get every single one of these toys to get the most out of the wave, but there are certain ones that I would consider must-haves for Modu fans, whether you like Revelation or not, like just as far as just good like evergreen Motu designs, I think some of these guys are great. Um, but I also understand people's reluctance to pick these up. They are quite different. Uh, they do have some problems with like proportions and stuff for some of them. And again, they might not be everyone's cup of tea. Like some people might only want Origins and that's understandable. But I think if you pick these guys up, overall you'll be quite pleased. And I think the price is pretty fair. You know, they're about $20, so they run you about the same as Marvel Legends toy. And quality wise, they're about where Marvel Legends is. Uh, I think they actually scale a bit bigger, so you may actually be getting more bang for your buck there. And um, yeah, I, I think it's well worth the cost. And I think overall it's been an enjoyable line so far. Of course, that is just my thoughts on this wave. So now I want to know what you all thought of it. Did you see this as a strong first wave, or did you see it as very weak, somewhere in the middle? Would you recommend these toys to someone else, or do you think they're just trash and you don't like them at all? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this retrospective, toss it a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this very long delayed retrospective of the first wave of Masters of the Universe, Masterverse. With all that said, I will see you next time.